Hey up, how you doing? My name is Stephen. If you've not been to my channel before, then welcome. I like to share with you, my viewers and my subscribers, my hobbies. And at the moment, because I'm locked in during to the pandemic here in England, uh, I can't share with you much metal detecting. But my other hobbies are mudlarking, coin ringing and wombling. And at the moment, I can't really do much of those apart from the coin ringing and making things from the junk that I dig up metal detecting. I've got loads and loads of silver in here, about 600 grams worth. But there's a piece of chain here, sterling silver men's bracelet. And I've even got a thimble, all of which are no use to me. So today I am going to be showing you how I make two new sterling silver members pins for those who have just joined my channel so let's get on with it Stephen is the man with the hat and the metal detector whoa, whoa. walking the land he's a treasure collector whoa, whoa. metal detecting and digging lots of holes looking for a First things first, get the casting moulds nice and clean. A towel compiler does a great job as acting as a lubricant so they slide in and out together. There's a tip for you if you never knew that. And that's what I'm going to be casting today, a couple of silver hat pins for my latest new members on my channel. This orange looking sand is no ordinary sand, it's an oil based sand. It's very fine and it's called Delft clay. There are imitations of Delft clay which are also very good and they're cheaper. The process is quite simple but it does take a bit of practice. It took me a long time to pick up a tip of casting a small piece like this and when I turn this over you'll see on the other side I've got a rubber bung in there and I'll tell you what that's for in just a moment there we go the rubber bung has fallen out look there it is I'll put it back in and that makes a casting reservoir to pour in the liquid silver a lot of casters on YouTube tend to leave just a four millimeter hole that's the minimum required to get the silver to flow through because it does set really quickly. I found it's much better to have a huge hole. I'm going to show you exactly how I do that. Talcum powder again between the two layers of sand prevents the silicon sand, the oil based sand from sticking together. Now because I'm doing the second half, and all the detail this time is on the second half, the top of the hat, rather than the flat base of the pin, I was actually compressing this stuffed clay really tightly, and it leaves a really nice impression like that. I just tapped it out, as you can see, and I'm going to put it back on the bottom piece, on the flat back, and I'll show you why. And this is the tip that I picked up by practice. I realised I was making so many mistakes and I realised this was the best way of doing it. Holding it in place, just put a cocktail stick through at the side. Now a lot of casters like to make the, the reservoir for pouring on the back of the actual object they're casting. This leaves a sprue which needs to be cut off and sanded down. I found it much easier, especially with the hats, which have a, a low profile to cast at the side of the actual piece, making that hole much bigger than four millimetres and it'll get bigger still, as you'll see in a moment. Making sure I don't brush off all that talcum powder, otherwise the two halves will stick together. Now you can see that's about an eight or nine millimeter pouring hole at the side. 
and you'll get a better idea how that works when I open it again after the pour. So instead of now having a small hole to pour in, I've now got a much bigger hole to pour in, and only a tiny area of eight millimeters. Now they put all the bits of scrap silver in I found whilst I was detecting. Some of these bits have been donated to me as well by Gary with two hours. The first hat pin is for Dawn Sherratt, who's one of my newest members just last week. No, I don't sell these hat pins at all, they're only for members of my channel. One of the few things that I don't sell. It takes a while to get the silver to temperature and then you have to keep it there. And even when you think that it's flowing nicely and turning over, because it like rolls, as you can see there, the, the liquid silver starts to roll. Give it a few more seconds so it's over hot and heat the edge of the crucible so when you pour it, it doesn't set. And pour it quickly when you do. Be accurate, whatever happens. There we go. That was a good pour open it up and you can now see look how that casting sprue is not underneath the hat it's just to one side which you can snap off and file it down and there's nothing on the back that needs cutting off and filing so therefore the finishing detail is much simpler and quicker look at that the most time time consuming part was actually just preparing the casting sand the finishing turned out really quick and nice. I hope you enjoyed that because I could be making one for you soon. Well that's it, that's a couple of hat pins made for my new channel members and if you'd like to acquire one of those pins sadly I don't sell them. But you can read about it in this pop-up card just here if your device shows one. If not, I've left some information in the video description. And if you like sand casting and want to see a bit more, I'm actually going to be doing a video on how to sand cast a genuine 2,000 year old silver Roman coin. And yeah, the results are quite convincing. Meanwhile, I've left a video on screen now, that one, which I think you may be interested in. But thank you for watching. I'll catch you later. To get one of my sterling silver hat pins, why don't you join now and become a channel member? Stephen digs stuff up and pimps it up so you guys can wear it.